Hello everyone, Chenoway12 here. Today we're going to be making this video about a new sort of cables. That's right, you guys all know that I love making videos of technology and I love to share my knowledge with all of you guys. I work in this field of work so when it comes to these sort of questions or sort of answers, I like to answer them. Today's cable, we're going to be talking about coax cables. You guys probably don't know what coax cables are. Well, today you're going to be learning a little bit of it, and if you guys want to learn more about it, I'm going to leave all the links of the information that I found online, all about them, in the description. So you guys can just check that out and see what uh, you guys can learn about it. Basically, coax cables are kind of copper cables used by a cable TV co company. So if you are, I don't know, if you have Kojiko Cable or Bell Express View, or Roger Cable. I'm not quite sure if Roger has cable, but if you have a company that is giving you cable service, then somewhat nine times out of ten you're gonna have coax cables behind your box or your TV. And coax cables is a kind of copper cable used by a cable TV company between the community antennas and user homes and businesses. Coax cable is sometimes used by a telephone company from their local office to a telephone pole near users. That means it is also used for telephone telephone service. So if you have telephone, you're more likely going to have a coax cable behind your MTA. If you guys don't know what an MTA, Google it. It's actually a good time for you guys to learn something new. An MTA is basically like a modem, an internet modem, but it provides you internet service and telephone service. It is also widely installed for use in business and corporations, ethernet and other types of local area network so it basically is for internet service as well so basically coax cable is a sort of cable that is used for many many things many many technologies today uh, if you guys don't know what a fiber optic cable is that's something that uh, I'm gonna be making a video as well it's another sort of cable that gives you a lot more of a signal strength for internet usage you can use it for uh, cable and phone but more likely they wouldn't be for phone, uh, it would just be more like for, for cable and internet. But we're going to be making more videos about this as well. Coax cable is called a coaxial cable because it is included one physical channel that carries the signal surrounded after a layer of insulation. So basically it is called a coaxial cable because it transmits a lot more information, a lot more signal wise to your TV so you got that real nice picture. You might not have that high definition but you have that picture where there's no snow. It's just basic standard cable. Uh, if you have a digital cable where you have a cable box then your coax cable will be connected to your cable box instead of your TV. You would still connect it to your TV but what you would have to do is you, you would have to basically connect your cable from the wall into your cable box in your cable box to your TV. You're transmitting your signal for your cable box into your TV so you can actually have digital cable. Most times I found that most HD boxes they don't have, you don't, you're not required to have two sort of cables, coax cables from the uh, wall into your cable box and cable box to your TV. More likely you only need one and that's from the wall into your cable box. So basically what you're doing is um, connecting one coax cable and your your HDMI cable gives you your picture and your sound so it basically replaces all those RCA cables you know instead of having, actually having four or five cables you're only having two cables behind your box and you're still having the same service as what you would have if you connected four or five cables so coax cables plays an important role in many things today including technology you guys are probably asking yourself, when did the coax cable come out? Well, first of all, coax cable was invented in 1929. So those are the times when coax cables just first came out. So basically, there's not a lot of businesses that actually started having them in 1929. But 1941, AT&T established a commercial. So basically, a commercially in 1941, AT&T established its first cross-continental coax transmission system in 1940. So that means in 1941, there was a commercially. So that means commercial account. 
So that means NTNT established this the first time, transmitting a coax transmission. So basically a transmission system in 1940. So that means they, they, they were the first one that used the coax cables. Depending on the carrier technology used and other factors, twisted pair copper wires and, and optical fibers are alternate to use from coax cables. So that means, like I said, the fiber optic cables and twisted pair cape, copper wires. You know, there's alternate cables you can use beside coax, but coax is the one that you would have to use for more likely for anything, anything else. Um, coax cables, every time I've ever connected cable service, that's the wires I would use, coax. Uh, I hear a lot of customers every day, you know, they tell me, you know, is it really necessary? And sometimes I would have to say, yes, it is, because that's the one, that's the sort of cable that is transmitting your signal for your cable box to work. If it wasn't for that, your box wouldn't work. Even if you had HDMI cables, that only gives you the picture in your, in your sound. If it wasn't for that coax cable to give you that signal for that picture to come up, you wouldn't have it. It wouldn't work. So, by using the coax cables, you know, you get a lot of it, a lot of it benefits out of it. So you're not just using it for one sort of a services, you're using it for multiple service. So basically there's always something that a customer always asks me, you know, sometimes when technicians always tell them, uh, you have a signal leakage, you know, and most customers, they look at me and they're like, what is a signal leakage? Is it, uh, is it the coax cables leaking or? No, it's not basically, it's not leaking. It's just a term us, us tech supports we use when you're having a fuzzy image on your picture. So I mean, if you're having a signal, a weak signal where we can't send signals to the box because there's no way for us to do that because there's just a cable line that goes from the wall into your TV, there's more likely something called a signal leakage. And that's why your picture is not so great. If your picture is like, uh, 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 it's like sounding like gibberish there's more likely chance that that uh, cable that you are connecting to there's a leakage to it and that's why it's causing this nothing serious the only thing that a technician probably would have to require to do is basically replace that that cable for new ones and if that doesn't work then you would have to go outside at the connection at the pool to see to have a further investigation so if he sees that there's something wrong from the outside, then it would be more required for him to do a maintenance call. I can't really say it, a maintenance call. Uh, that basically means uh, a technician, like a higher engineer technician has to go out there, set an appointment, and he would have to look at the services outside. So it means if you're having some ongoing issue with cable service, and I mean, there's more likely chance that your cables is, uh, they're more likely there to be bad. They're, they're, the leakage is really bad when it comes to a real-time pixelating. Um, most of the times we can't fix it. Uh, even if you refresh the signal, reboot the box, it doesn't really do nothing. Sometimes it will just keep doing it. And most customers, they get upset. In some way I understand because, you know, they pay good service, good money for services that uh, they're not really required to get. So, a signal leakage is not always depending on the, the cables leaking. It's not that. It's just a, a term that us tech, tech supports we use to determine if the picture that is really screwed up could be depending on a signal leakage. So, it doesn't mean that the, the, the cables are leaking. Like I said many times, it's not because of that. And I actually have a set of coax cables that I, I'm actually going to show you. I have actually two. Comes like very long like this. Okay, there's like white. But if you actually went in, in the cable, they're all a bunch of wires. And that's why it's called a copper wire. And these are coax cables right here. They, one of these screw on thing. And that's why you have to screw these into your cable box. Because if you don't screw these, then it's not going to work. I mean, your signal is not going to get there. So this little thingy, this little copper, copper thing in the middle, that's the thing that transmits the signal. So it throws a signal to the cable box. So it basically tells the box, start working. He is able to get the service. You know, it's basically telling it. So every part of this wire has its own job. Some will transmit information. Some will, will send some information out. You know, there's everything in the cable 
cable tech jobs out there, everyone has its individual job to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave all the links of all the description of the coax cables, basically. I'm going to give you guys a brief description of what a signal leakage is. A signal leakage is the passage of elect electronic electromagnetic fields through through the shield of cables and occurs in both directions. Increase of the passage of the outside signal into the cable and can result in noise and disruption of your of your desired signal. This is what I was saying. The picture may not be that good. The the sound may like uh may sound like uh, a fuzzy image sound like like that sound like that so signal leakage happens a lot so even if you do have it you're not the first one to have it because many many people have it so basically increase in the passage of signal extend to remain within the cables inside the outside world and can be result in weaker signal at the end of the cable and radio frequency interference to a nearby device. So you ever heard about those um, radio frequency, you know, like off air, like like that? You might hear that because you're not, you're not getting enough signal for your TV to work. You're not getting that picture wise because that signal is too weak to work. So basically it's just like a satellite, okay? You know there's a big storm coming and it knocks out the signal. What is it gonna do? Well, your satellite channels are not going to work because the signal, the satellite depends on the signal of, it's like a cell phone basically. If you don't have no signal on your cell phone, you're not going to get a connection, right? So that means if you're surfing Yahoo on your phone and two minutes later your connection knocks out, no signal, your Yahoo is not going to work. It's going to say page not available. It's the same thing. You know, if you don't have signal, your service is not going to work. So basically this, uh, this page that I'm going to be sharing with you all, um, it's going to be in the description, so do check that out. It's uh, pretty much a lot of good information regarding this. For the signal leakage, for example, in the United States, signal leakage from a cable television system is regulated by the FCC. And this is what it comes to the FCC. If you guys don't know what a FCC is, you guys are wondering on your bill, sometimes it might show on your bill. FCC fee. I'm pretty sure you guys have probably seen this before. Or even buying an electronic. If you go to the, the store getting a computer and you get like a seven cent FCC fee, you guys are probably wondering what the hell that is, right? Well, the FCC is a Federal Communication Commission tax. So basically, it they, they're the one that takes charge of electronics. So you have to pay it. There's no, we can't waive it, we can't credit you. It, you have to pay it. It's uh, a tax that is it's federal. It's a federal tax. If you don't pay it, then there's more likely chance you're gonna you're not gonna be getting that signal, or you're not gonna get that device. So since cable signals use the same frequencies, um, so it's basically the operators may also choose to monitor their network for leakage to prevent increase, increase or whatever. So basically, the network itself, they might want to let's say. Oh, I want to I want to keep them monitored this uh, this leakage because if it does happen a lot, they're gonna have to find out what's really causing this to happen. So really, it goes through a lot of networks. So it goes through the channel network, it goes through the FCC, it goes through the cable provider. So you know when you do when you see a technician or you you're calling your internet provider, you know screaming at them. I know you're mad, but you always remember that has to go through a lot of investigation to really find out why this signal leakage happens frequently. There's got to be a reason why it's not working. If it's just one channel, depending on what channel you're looking for, it could be just the network. It could be just the actual, I don't know, channel may be switching other channels. So it might not be on channel 4 anymore, it could be on channel 10. You know, depending on what you're going through, you have to go through step by step to really determine on why this is causing this to happen. There's always got to be a reason why. So this is really what I do every day. My field of work is to learn technology. I learn the leakage, I learn the actual interruptions, why it's not working, refresh signals, reboot the box. I learn coax cables, RCA cables, component cables, HDMI cables. We learn everything. 
And this is something that really is something we all need to know. Especially for those like myself that I didn't even know nothing before I started my job. You know, when I first started my job, you know, before I started my job, I should say, if I knew my internet wasn't working, I'd call my provider and say, what, what's really going on? Why is my internet not working? You know, I, I'd yell at them because I didn't really know what really causing this to happen. But within the months that I learned this with, with throughout my job, I learned that, you know, it's not always your cable company that actually is responsible for this. It has to go through a lot of steps before actually resolving this. So this is something I want to learn. I want to teach you guys all for you guys to know for the nearest future. So if you do have any problems with your internet provider or cable company or phone, this is something that we need to get out there. So I want to keep making videos like this and teach you guys all something new. Next week or probably in a few days, I'm going to be making a video about cable. Okay, We're not going to talk about cable wires, we're just going to learn about cable. Digital cable, basic standard, what is the difference? We're going to I'm going to teach you this. Because most of you guys probably don't know. You guys probably, when you order cable, you guys are going to say, oh, well, I'm looking for channel 500, you know, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it with basic standard cable. You never know what, what kind of channels you're going to get with your provider. So I'm going to show you and I'm going to teach you these kind of things to what expect when ordering cable. And then two days later we're going to be talking about internet only and you guys will expect what kind of speed you're going to be expecting with your internet so I'm going to teach you guys all something new every day and I'm hoping you guys will take this as a good thing I hope you guys all think that I'm not boring and don't make sense because I'm trying to make some sense so I hope you guys all enjoy this video my name is Shineboy12 take care and I hope you guys have a great night peace out